Texture is the, one of the key ways to spice up your outfit. Let's take a look at what textures we've seen on the runways for spring summer 2024. Let's get into it. Hello, my name is Maria and welcome to MM Design or mm, Design. When they're trying to figure out creative outfit, people usually think about color, maybe they're thinking about different shapes, but texture sometimes gets left behind and I think it's one of the easiest ways to spice up your outfit. I have gathered all of the textures that I saw on so many runways and group them together to show you how they were styled so if you have something in particular in your closet and you're just struggling to figure out how to wear it or maybe you want new inspiration you can just go ahead to that chapter and watch it but because this is about to be a really long video i'm gonna split it up into two parts so it's a little bit easier for you in this video we're going to be talking about fur fuzziness, velvet, suede, leather, patent leather, denim, distressed, French, feather trend, as well as sheer and silky trend. So without any further ado, let's get into it. And let's get started with the furs. But to my surprise, there weren't too many of them on the runways, even though we had that Slavic bimbo trend of everybody going to the snow in their vintage faux furs or whatever you have it. We have not that much, maybe because the northern world experiencing a little bit more heat and not really thinking about the coats for spring summer, while for the southern hemisphere not too many people there to attract to this we also have this new hot aesthetic that is trying to replace the quiet luxury and it is wife of a mobster like a mafia thing so if you like anything from dolce gabbana you're yeah that's it all right next one would be the fuzzy oh so it's a little bit on a shorter length maybe they're fuzzy sweaters like mohair maybe it's a little bit more messier than that like having a little bit of a fringe to uh, an item of course this is very popular in the outwear like in bottega veneta and in dior in their men's suits i really like this texture a little point for you if you do have textured skin then wearing this near your skin won't highlight the textureness in your face it's just going to look really natural on the other hand if you're going to be wearing a silk shirt or something it's going to highlight the imperfections in your skin just because the contrast between them will be really strong all right, the next one is velvet. For sure, not something that we think about when we're talking about spring, summer, but here they are. There weren't too many of these, and this tend to be really an evening kind of a texture. We see them in gowns and Balenciaga, as well as in some suits in Tom Ford, and that is pretty much it. Moving on to suede. So this is the reverse of the leather so the leather is a little bit textured it's not shiny at all so we see this kind of material i'm not saying that these are all show using real leather but that kind of texture is seen on the outerwear of course in dresses and blazers and jackets jw anderson even had like a, a short 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 situation in them and even dresses in laquan smith all right now moving on to leather i thought it was very smooth transition from suede we see leather still don't you worry this was one of the largest video collections that i have compiled and i needed to cut back a lot so it is still very popular if you have invested into leather or faux leather products or items then i encourage you to get them out still wear them yeah have fun with it but keep in mind that leather is a little bit on the shiny side and it might be really contrasting with your skin if you do have that imperfection and it is a little bit shiny so whenever anything is shiny material wise then it is going to increase 
a V wear size. Thinking about your figure, for instance, if you are a reverse triangle, think about getting some bottoms in leather, such as pants, skirts, you name it, just because it will visually increase the size. Along with the shininess, we also have the stiffness of the leather, so that will also increase the size, but it will hide away any imperfections, for instance, underwear lines, or maybe cellulite, or anything else that you're worried about. We do see leathers in many colors, so this is perfect for spring, summer. We see some red and greens and other colors. Of course, black and brown leathers are predominant, but it's nice to have that spice in a variety of colors as well. We not only see outerwear in this, we also see dresses and skirts and trousers, as I mentioned. We In Gucci show, we have a bunch of those. We have short shorts, we have short dresses. It is a really interesting idea of leather during the summer, but who am I to judge? Louis Vuitton even had a polo sh oversized shirt with some shorts and that kind of a leathery texture in the menswear show. Of course, lots of bomber jackets. We also see some oversized jackets like in Louis Vuitton, as well as a new you show having a micro skirt and a micro top in leather as well. Now thinking back to the figure, if you want to correct it, for instance, if you are a pear-shaped, having more volume in your hips, then considering putting a leather up top, maybe having a cropped blazer of some sort in that, or maybe with the shininess and the stiffness of the fabric of the leather is just going to add more volume ups up here which will balance your figure very nicely. Oh, and in case you haven't noticed, this video is for both men and women. I try to include men's wear as much as I can in here as well, so I'm trying not to discriminate. And basically right now we have fashion going into very unisex level. And if you're okay with it, you're okay with it. If you're not, that's all right. You do you, let other people do what makes them happy. I feel like that's the secret to peace. Whenever you let somebody be and be happy and then they'll become kind and nobody does anything stupid and bad when they come from the place of kindness. And I wanted also to point out that we do have a variety of the stiffness of the leather. Some leathers are more like a biker jacket and it's like almost unmovable while others are more malleable. Probably it's because some of them are actually real leather and some are faux leather. I tend to see that the faux leather is much more malleable and way easier to move in but there is also a never-ending battle between what's better for the environment faux leather or real leather. There is definitely more great advances in technology that creates more sustainable faux leather, but I feel like we're pretty far away from it being available to everybody as it is very expensive. And if you're interested in that, I'll encourage you to check out Stella McCartney. She has been a pioneer in this industry, both with leathers and with furs. Most of the jackets were moto jacket inspired. We also see even some texture being brought to that leather in the Chloe show and a couple of uh, garments. We also see like pleating of it or draping of the leathers in some looks. And of course the leather blazer or leather coat that I've seen on quite a lot of people is still really relevant today and this upcoming season. We also see this leather going into more of a grungy looks like in Dion Lee and mixed with so many different textures. Like here we see some lace paired with it and we're gonna see some more example of the mixing of the textures in the same outfit and even sometimes in the same garment. But maybe we'll take a look at that in, in the part two of this topic. All right, now let's take a look at the more shinier side to this, like a patent leather 
or maybe a PVC, so basically like plastic. Balenciaga had this amazing wet look dress that basically looks like it's latex. I love the look. We also see this more of a shinier plastic designs in Balmain, as well as we have it in Chanel. And Dolce Gabbana had a few raincoats in that see-through material, as well as not so see-through, like this leopard print. Yay, mobster wife. Gucci as well had a few looks in that shiny, leathery texture. I really like it. It's one of my go-tos, but once again, remember that although maybe it's like skin tight, it will increase the size of your legs, for instance, uh, or the jacket. So consider your body when you're thinking about purchasing a certain item. Is it gonna go up top? Is it gonna go down below? Is it a full dress? How is it going to look in proportions to you in particular? Usually these are on a thinner side. They're not as stiff. They're a little bit more valuable, unless this is the Mugler here. <laughs> you can see I love these corsets but they're so expensive, even like from Etsy or something, they're still in the like high hundreds uh, of dollars. I'm like thinking of making it for myself, but my figure isn't, it's not mannequin. They usually, what they do is they have these plastic sheets or PVC sheets and they apply a lot of heat, like with a heat gun and put it on top of a mannequin so it kind of melts onto its shape with boobies and such and then they just make a course at the back or something or they do something else so if you are that mannequin shape then it's gonna be perfect for you unfortunately it's not for me we also see this plastic in the blue marine show having like maybe six dresses of fully nude illusion but it is pretty basically nude there's no illusion in there they're naked under there <laughs> all right next one up would be denim i know denim is like that texture that nobody thinks of it as a texture also when i think about denim i don't even think that it's blue although it is blue and i'm always say oh i don't have any blue in my closet but then i have so much denim so yeah, I do have blue in my closet, apparently. And we also can have denim being a little bit more stiff or a little bit less stiff. Usually the cheaper the, the denim, it becomes less stiff and a little bit more comfortable to wear, honestly. But think about it in terms of your body. Stiff denim is great to hide certain imperfections in the skin or maybe like rolls and such but it does add v volume because it's stiff it's like a little bit away from your body although diesel does have this denim-ish tight things i just think that they're dyed in order to appear like they're denim but okay don't take my word for it i live on vancouver island and i don't have access to actually physically touch these items and see what materials they're made out of we see denim being used such as a canadian tuxedo basically having denim head to toe or maybe having it uh, paired with something else maybe having dresses and denim having maybe up denim of having a bralette out of the pockets or something like that we also see denim in the gray format also those denim skirts y project had a little bit of a unique take on the slit situation so not quite that simple a little bit interesting I think the denim skirts that were popular in the previous seasons are still okay to wear this time around. Maybe just try to figure out how to style them in a more fresher way. Maybe adding a little bit of texture to it in a different manner. Like here we have denim pants and a sparkly top. Let's head into distress. It's a really nice continuation because denim is once again being distressed. Remember back when we had holes everywhere? Yes, it is back. If you do have a pair of pants that for some reason you spilled something on it or maybe it got dirty, maybe you put some paint on it by accident when you were doing renovations, that's all right. Put more paint on it, put more stains on it, 
put some tears in there, it's good to go. We'd also see not just the denim, oh, actually Dolce Gabbana, check it out, skinny ripped denim. It's like we went back in time. We also see this distressed look in other textures as well. Maybe it's a little bit wrinkled. That was previous season's top, top, top thing. Maybe it's ripped. Maybe it looks like it's ripped. Maybe it looks like it's even half eaten by moths in your closet, like from Diesel here. We also see some paints, like as if the wearer was, for instance, sitting down and they were sprayed with paint and then they got up and they have all these creases, almost like wrinkles on your face. But on the denim here, like in Diesel, this is definitely much more grungier look, a little bit of a more of a street style look. Oh, here we go in Diesel, almost melted plastic. We also see Low Ebb having these textures, very delicate, but distressed at the same time. Y Project had these wrinkles going like in a tornado on their clothes. I'm really curious of how they're keeping it all up and what's the maintenance of these garments and how are they gonna fit in anybody's closet, like honestly. Maybe it's just an art project and then actually there's not gonna be any for sale, but anyways, fringe. Moving on from distressed into fringe, we also have some of those. We also see some of the messy fringe here in Alexander McQueen. I love them. Erdem and a few more show had this kind of fringe of almost like a garment was supposed to be like these little hairs from the pattern that you like turned it inside out and all the hairs are loose and that is what it is. We also see dresses and skirts having the fringe but not going downwards like a side weight fringe. You can see this what what I mean here. I feel like these are more dangerous ways of having fringe because they loop and they're attached in two spots. So if you get hooked onto something, you're for sure either getting stuck, getting damaged, or getting the actual piece destroyed because you're probably gonna rip it. I love these in Alexander McQueen having a stroke of paint and it continuing off of the garment as a way of a fringe. We also see these fringes going longer and longer, Dior having dresses, having skirts in this fringe. Eve once again, of Ferragama having a little accent of it. Gucci having a sparkly fringe on the skirts and the coats, I love that. We also see like almost a DIY fringe moment in Masoni here and a couple of outfits. We, the Mugler show, oh my goodness. Who's, who has time to take care of these items? If they're gonna be trash. <laughs> I love how they look though, don't get me wrong. Prada also had so much fringe on the runways. I quite like this looks and even they had the almost crystallized or like having the fringe be a little bit extra with like sparkles and such, like almost a Christmas tree rain, you know what I mean? We also see the fringe being on a shorter side. I guess this is much more wearable for the everyday or just everyday people as well. We see this in Bottega Veneta in more of an outer wear as well as just having that as an addition to a garment, having that texture being the spotlight of it. We have it in full garment, full dresses as well, or just having puffs here and there. Love it. But this one is more wearable for sure. So once again, fringe creates a lot of volume when you're thinking about buying it for yourself. Think like, is it going to be a top? How is it gonna go with everything else on me? If you are reverse triangle, is that gonna be a skirt to balance out the proportions? Is it going to be a dress? Yes, it will hide like all the little imperfections, but it will make you look larger. And if you're very petite, then you might just disappear in all that fringe and it's going to wear you rather than you're wearing it. And we both have the fringe more in a messy way as well as in a silky way where it looks really nice and flat everywhere. We also have like little bursts like in Stella McCartney and in 
dress for no ten. Fringe is definitely a statement piece and I would totally wear it, but I do get really, really distracted by it. I start playing with it and yeah, if you're that kind of a person, then maybe it's not for you or maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it will keep you calm. I always play with my hair when I'm like listening to anybody. It's kind of my fidget. This might be it for you. All right, so feathers are not as popular as they were in the previous seasons. Yes, we do have a little bit of them still on their one ways, but I feel like they're being substituted by other trends at the moment just because like designers had enough fun with them they're like let's try out something else let's make money everybody else already has fur and feathers let's just do something else but anyways feathers are really fun also they're really creating a lot of volume so think about where you're adding this it's just like fringe basically let's talk about sheer sheer is another one that was very popular on the runways just like leather we've seen it in a lot of shows and i feel like it's a really really great styling piece so i'm not saying telling you to just wear sheer on top of your underwear you can layer it with something else you can have it as a pool cover for instance or loves to have like this sheer tulle skirts with a longer blazer kind of having that almost a dress format with everything being covered but we do see a lot of dresses a lot of gowns in that sheer texture like in Dolce Gabbana it was a lot like almost everything was either sheer or lace or sheer lace <laughs> i would i would need to say that we see this everywhere and they did pair it more with a fancy lingerie underneath rather than just a granny panties that we've seen in maybe Miu Miu shows something that's been styled very hard in the recent year i much more prefer this one but i don't know how appropriate that is to wear out and about maybe on the red carpet maybe but actually wearing for everyday life maybe not i do love how you can introduce these sheer items as a layer though like for instance here in Missoni, we have two layered dresses like one on the bottom and then have this sheer one at the top maybe with a little bit extra texture in there via draping or pleating prada had amazing flowy organza dresses they looked like they were out of a sci-fi movie like having these baubles of joy following them i don't know it just it was magic for me at least we also seen some a lot of like almost bodycon dresses and just having these flowy organza or silky silky dresses once again with just lingerie underneath and this trend can be worn differently as i mentioned because it is so soft and thin it can either be really tight to your body like we just seen in a diesel or it can be super flowy but bunched together and like really ruffled and really big on you so you can decide how you want to interpret the style for yourself how is it going to play nicely in your everyday style laquan smith here such a beautiful gown with having the belly showing and just everything else really reasonably covered in my opinion or this one having like a ba bathing suit underneath we also see some a little bit like a toned down versions of sheer like in lo eve and and so nothing super overly sexualized but still you can see everything underneath which is an interesting contrast having this this contrast of simplicity something that you wouldn't think that is sexy and feminine and just having a nude body under there. Yves Saint Laurent men's section also had sheer tops, blouses, you name it. Really cool. I would like to see some men rocking these. 
Saint, Yves Saint Laurent for women as well, they mostly had very tight to body sheer items and mostly just the tops worn without any lingerie underneath and maybe like a loose fitted trouser. I really like how they look. Will I be wearing that? No, but you know, I can appreciate from the far. In Blue Marine, we're continuing with that sheer trend as we did see those transparent dresses, but this time in material format, we also see uh, some transparent uh, plastic bra on the runways from Courageous. And Undercover had really cool uh, blazers and other items that had sheer. It is like they're completely made out of sheer material, but they also have all the structure of the regular items. So they had to put so much attention into having clean insides to for them to work out. You can even see models' hands being seen through the pockets. There is some interesting hidden things inside of the lining. There is like a razor blade and like maybe like a bank card and something else. It's really cool idea and I wonder how this gonna go into the masses and into the world into more of a sellable product i guess that's what i'm trying to get to all right next one is silky silky material is so flowy so nice and we've seen a lot of them already in more of that nightgown kind of a slip situation we still see some of those but maybe they're a little bit and more interesting in a different kind of a format maybe unique cut we also see the silkiness in a lot of bomber jackets mostly for men but i don't think there you can like put a line to it anybody could wear these once again it's silky it is shiny because of that silkiness right so think about where you're placing it are you i'm like always talking about only pair and <laughs> and reverse triangle but if for instance if you are a reverse triangle then think about having a silky bottom to attract more attention to your bottom to even out it visually with a bigger top or if you're on the other hand a pear shape then think about having that silkiness at the top if you are any other shape i guess you can wear a silky longer coat and it will just make you a little bit like taller i guess but i love all the gowns and the silky material are amazing but I would encourage you not to buy them from fast fashion brands because they do not take into account of having proper, good quality material. Sure, it looks great from the hanger. Sure, it's gonna look good the first two times you wear it, but then the wear and tear of the, you know, of your life are gonna make these items look really bad and then you're not gonna be wearing them for much longer. So yes, you were warned, it does add volume, it does create a visual impact. So think about placing it on like a smaller portion of you. If you wanna look smaller in general, then don't purchase it, don't wear it yeah and once again i mentioned it at the beginning of the video if you do have more of a textured skin then try to keep it away from your face as in contrast with it it's going to highlight just how uneven your complexion is but as i mentioned we've seen this silkiness being used in a variety of garments i'm not saying that this is silk i keep forgetting the word <laughs> for it I just looked it up, it's satin. So having that satin weave of more threads going across uh, the top. So they're really open to being caught on stuff, if you know what I mean. So they, they might not be actually made out of silk. They might be made out of polyester. Um, like for instance, I'm sure these JW Anderson pants are not silk material. <laughs> 
These are usually great for more of like an evening wear or maybe a special occasion wear, unless it's a bomber jacket, let's face it. I do love how it plays on with the light and how it's worn here. And once again, Yves Saint Laurent having really amazing men's blouses. We also see this in some great uh, dresses from Stella McCartney and a lot of it in Ralph Lauren. Of course, this texture is great for layering. It's great for draping. So it might be interesting way to play around with actually creating texture out of that texture, if you know what I mean. <laughs> if we're talking about real silk, it's great to wear during any weather. It kind of uh, controls the temperature very nicely and it's very breathable and it's super moisture absorbent. Well, here we are. We reached the end of part one of the video. If you're interested in texture, then I encourage you to check out the other one. Hopefully it's out by now. For now, I just wanted to say a big thank you for all of you who show your support by liking my videos or commenting. And if you're new, then you can show your support by doing exactly the same or even subscribing if you're not already. I've noticed some of you have reached out to me on Instagram, which is great. I love to say hello to actually Actually see you in your photos and in your style because here I'm like oh I wonder who is writing this or like they're talking about their favorite color and I'm like trying to imagine them in this color but I can't because then I'm imagining like a completely made-up person but uh, when I see you your style on Instagram I'm like wow I'm blown away there's some people that have a pretty big following on Instagram too and I'm like oh my goodness thank you very much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it I will see you next week and yeah stay classy Bye.